So the Outback trial is an international randomised control trial which is testing the value of giving additional adjuvant chemotherapy to women with locally advanced cervix cancer to see if we can improve overall survival rates. And the trial completed accrual a couple of years ago and we haven't yet analysed the results in terms of the primary outcome, which is to see if overall survival rates are improved. But what we noticed during the course of the trial was that a significant percentage of women allocated to receive the additional four cycles of adjuvant chemotherapy weren't actually starting that treatment. And we wanted to try and understand why that was happening. So we looked at some of the baseline factors of those women when they were enrolled in the trial. And we thought maybe it might have been those women who had bad side effects with their initial chemo radiation or who were maybe less well, who were smokers or overweight that didn't start the treatment, but this in fact wasn't the case. Uh, we found that the strongest predictors of not actually starting the adjuvant chemotherapy were age 60 or more and non-Caucasian race, which is quite surprising and suggests that there's some other factors at play or some type of disparities that preventing those women from starting the additional treatment. These apparent disparities had a quite a big impact on the trial because we ended up having about 20% of the women not starting the planned adjuvant chemotherapy. So it meant that when the Independent Data Safety Monitoring Committee looked at the trial, that they told us that we needed to actually expand the sample size for the trial to be able to have enough power to answer our primary endpoint. So I think we need to understand more why this is happening. Obviously, the Outback trial wasn't designed to answer this question, but we certainly heard anecdotally from women that some of the reasons why they didn't start the treatment was maybe because their insurance wasn't covering participation in clinical trials or because they needed to go back to work and go back to uh, be closer to their homes. So I think we really need to understand why women might not be completing planned um, clinical trial treatments. So I think we really need to understand what prevents women from participating in clinical trials and if they sign up for clinical trials, what, what might stop them completing the planned clinical trial treatment. And there might be factors that we need to do something about, such as the financial toxicity of cancer treatments.